Greetings. Right, chat and uh team, we're gonna kick this off. Um for just a quick quick thing before we get started. Uh first first stream. Se uh, session six of our story. We are a little bit uh, a little bit through, however, it's we're still in the early stages. Um the campaign is called Land of the Lost, but it is a modified homebrew version of Curse of Strahd. This is the second time that I'm running this campaign uh, with a new new group, although one of our players is from our previous telling of this story. Um, but new group, new characters, new classes, all that sort of thing. If you want to uh, know anything a little bit about the campaign, join the Discord. In the Discord, uh, under the Mimics and Minions section, you'll find um, a brief overview of what the story is about. And uh, I will be posting some little recaps from time to time on the progression of the story you'll also find a list of who is playing and what they're playing and uh, also a section about the maps uh, some of the maps that, that i'll be using uh, for this as well so without any further ado we are going to kick off uh, tonight's session um did we lose grim hmm Okay, well, hopefully he'll be back shortly. Uh, I won't, we'll, we'll give him a couple of minutes before we kick it off. Uh, what's up, Ghoul? So as a general rule, um, we will not be interacting with chat. Uh, once we start, we, we will start, and that'll be it. There'll be no uh, answering of questions in the chat. So if you do have any questions, make sure you uh, post them in the Discord. Uh, that's where they're more likely to get answered in the next sort of few days over the, over the course of the time uh, with us seems your discord has shit to bed no it's not allowed to shit to bed mr grim if you have to restart discord and or your pc go for it we will wait for you have got a bit of time yes yes no i did not or no proficiency okay uh, we'll just we'll, we'll just run that as it is. Like, um, I what I may do is add at some point I may add a offhand attack which removes the proficiency. But at this okay. stage we can I just I'll just calculate it, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so internet's still working, which you find weird, but your Discord's not connecting. Yeah, re like fully restart, shut down, and restart Discord. If that doesn't help, then I would suggest restarting the PC. Back. He's back. I'm back. Back yeah. back. Sort of started freezing and I'm like, I think that's a me issue. And it was. It was. There you go. Uh you enjoyed Dean even been able to watch people playing it on stream. Yeah, with this one doing a little different without cameras and things like that. It's just it's more about the story. Focusing on that sort of thing. So now that Mr. Grimm has returned. We shall uh, kick into our recap from our previous session. So, last we left off, you had discovered that beneath the Durst Manor, part of the family crypt seemed to have been converted into a living quarter, which, and while exploring, you found some uh, potentially useful items. Um, you reached an area which seemed to be uh, hindered by a closed door, Ripple attempts to open it only to be attacked by it as it morphs into a weird creature with large tooth filled maw and many eyes and a long sticky tongue. Uh, the table also morphs into another of these creatures during the battle. Um, Reed narrowly missing having his feet removed from his legs. Um, Orvan and Reed both sustaining some injury during this fight, but you both, you managed to defeat both of these creatures with without too many uh, hassles. Not lingering here for long, you press on into the bowels of Durst Manor, finding a random room which seems that many people have died as an offering of sorts, it, it appears, uh, along with a defaced statue um, holding a crystal orb. The crystal orb that lay in its hand was lifted by uh, Eurek's mage hand and in doing so revealed a secret door leading to an ascending staircase. 
taking the staircase, moving further into the bowels of the under the undercroft of Durst Manor. The ascending staircase quickly becomes a descending staircase, leading further into the depths beneath the house. You eventually come to a small chamber holding 13 alcoves or 13 little um, niches, each holding a random item seemingly of no magical use, but oddities nonetheless, maybe ritualistic in nature. Drek's mage hand comes in handy once again as uh, Ripple discovers the sloped hallway flooded with water leads to a rusty portcullis, which leads to another larger room. And it seems on the opposite side of this room is a breach in the wall, which may be your way to escape this house. Mage Hand opens the portcullis, not fully, but enough to enter into this room. Upon entering the room, the room is lit by some unseen force. Thirteen figures now stand about this room, chanting, one must die, one must die, over and over again. Ripple taking the lead once again, leads, walks to the center of the room up to where it seems an altar of sorts stands, chains hanging from the ceiling, blood stains visible upon this altar, attempting to sacrifice one of her sp <laughs> spell um, components, a spider, hoping this would be enough to appease these cultists. However, unfortunately, it, it did not seem to help. And upon leaving the dais in the center, heading towards the breach in the wall, the cultists turn and face the breach. The chant changes. And instead of one must die, the chant changes to Lucas the destroyer, we summon thee. And from the breach, in the wall, the water bubbles and moves as a hideous creature made up of what seems to be many bodies, both humanoid and animal, emerges. And this is essentially where we rejoin you now. As um, this creature, which um, you guys should now see on your, your screen, uh, I'll describe it for our chat. However, it is about 12 feet tall. It is made up of maybe three or four dozen different corpses, perhaps animal and human or humanoid. Many faces, glowing eyes, arms reaching from places. Looks like many arms, in fact, could have four or five. It's hard to tell. It's sort of, it's still rising from the water, blackened and covered in what seems to be oil or some kind of dark echo. So with that, we will change our scene for our players. And we'll go back to the room you once were in. And uh, from here, we will unpause and we will get you all to roll initiative. as uh, this creature starts to slowly move forward. Unnatural 20. An unnatural 20. It's still a 20. <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is still good. <laughs> <laughs> the unholy is 20. <laughs> so uh, for, for uh, everyone else, we got, we've, well, this looks pretty good. We got Orvan first in the initiative order. Then we have Arkos, Shurik. The creature, Sayura, Reed, and then Ripple last. Ripple rolled extremely low. <laughs> so we'll begin our combat. So, Ulvan, you are first in the initiative order. This creature has bubbled out of the ground and has taken a, a large, slow step towards Ripple. <clears throat> okay. Well, I do not want to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, I don't Surprisingly. want to have any more stuff taken off of me, please. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> if I go into this corner, how much? 
Okay. Uh, we oh, want yeah. to change out, change the scene over here for the chat too, so you guys can see what's happening here. Yeah. Um. So you've moved to the far corner. Easily enough done. The f the thirteen figures that were surrounding this room are no longer there. They have vanished. Moving to that corner, you're out of the water. You're up sort of two feet off the, the level of the water in the room. Oh, here's the ruler. Sorry, it's just trying to look for the ruler. Just want to make sure. It, it, how big is this room exactly? Like, uh, Give or take, you can sort of roughly surmise it's about 30 feet from side to side, 30 by 30. Okay. that's. Um, and holding control and using left <laughs> mouse button to draw out will give you a ruler as well. Oh, thank you. I clicked on it and then it wouldn't let me do anything. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I'm just going to <laughs> sit here. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to uh, attack? You're not going to do gonna anything? I'm going to hold an action just in case it comes towards me. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to no hold worries. like a uh, attack. Not uh, a problem. Like just with my mace, I should say. So. No worries. Holding, holding <laughs> a melee attack in case it comes close enough to reach you. Not a problem. That is your turn. Arcos. Mm -hmm. You're up, Eureka, you're on board. Ah, shit. <laughs> um, so Arcos is going to, like, looking at Orvan, like, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Like, I'm going to, like, move to the back of the room, you know, like, collide into things. Ah, I hate this. Let's just walk like this. <laughs> And I'm gonna grab out like the hand crossbow. Yep. That we found, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and shoot at one of its many heads. No worries. Target and fire away, good sir. I have to get used to doing this from the sheet. Yeah, but... I removed the HUD. It was yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah. It was having some major issues. It's having a huge whiz. Oh, I did it twice. All right. Um, attack. Normal. Here we go. Unfortunately, that does not hit. What I will say is you fire, you, you're not used to using a hand crossbow. You're probably used to using a short bow or something similar. So it's a little bit foreign to you. You load it and you fire it. And the creature, even though it's slow moving, seems to be still morphing as it's raising out of the water. And you just, just miss just over its left shoulder. Striking yeah. the wall behind it. And I just uh, yelled at Ripple, get back here, Ripple! And is that That'll your turn? Yes. Jarik, you're, uh, you're up. Uh, Sayer on board. Uh, I'm going to run around the outside to the corner on the opposite side. Before that, I'll actually engage my blade song. Oh, I can, I can actually add that to you now. So I'll be 40 foot of movement. Hang on a sec. I got it. Uh, why is my convenient effects not working? Well, that's interesting. Oh, there we go. Wait, it's on. Cool. So your AC is increased. Your movement speed is also increased. Uh, oh, apparently it's one wall. I can't drag myself all the way there. So hang on, let me go the other way then. Yes, uh, what you'll find is um, you find it very hard to drag yourself out of the water and up this wall, even though it's only a couple of feet. It's it's like you're being sucked back into the water, which is why you can't do that. Okay, okay so I actually can only make it to here then. Um, and then I will also hold my action, which will be a whip attack. No worries. Two held actions. Make sure you remember what they are, because I probably will not. Is that your turn? That's it. It is now its turn. As it steps forward and lashes out at you, Ripple. The fact that you're the first one there, and it is the closest thing, you are the closest thing to it. Mm -hmm. um, it reaches out with seeming maybe... Two or three arms all at once. Um, 
that is not going to make an attack per se. It is going, you are going to need to make a strength save for me, please. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, so I just have As it to attempts to yeah. grab you. Right now. Please let the dice be. Haha. <laughs> that is a failure. <laughs> you are now. Um, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Can I use my inspo? Uh, you do have luck rolls, so you can re-roll that. Everyone should have them back for the start of this. Oh, right. So you do have luck in. rolls. So remember, you guys have your luck rolls, so you can use that if you wish. Are you going to attempt to re-roll? Nutty. For now. I'll just go with whatever happens. He's going to go with them, whatever happens? Yep. Mm -hmm. Um... I will, I will offer it up to the rest of the party if someone else wants to offer, it, offer these up in, in, in her place. She's choosing not to at this point. Uh, Arcos would offer his up. So when he said, Ripple, you've got to get back over here, like okay. that's him like driving her on. No worries. So, yeah, so I'll use, my... use, I'll you, you use yours, re-roll oh, you, your I'll, roll. I'll do the saving throw instead of the strength check this time, eh? Yes, yes, it might be, might be better. doesn't really help you, unfortunately. That's a lower no. roll. Because you're a minus one strength, and it's the same. The strengths, the cheek, checks same, the same. same but... So, this is what happens. Uh, the creature reaches out, and just as you th think it's going to try and slam down on top of you with this, with a hand that looks like five or six hands all sort of merged into one. Instead, the fingers elongate and they start to wrap around your body. Um, you are now um, not just grappled, but you are starting to be pulled into the creature. Um, so you are unable to move. Um, let me... I would say... At this stage, you're just grappled. Okay. But you are unable to move. You can still, you can still attack and call out and things like that on your turn. Um... But that is, its whole turn is to literally reach out, wrap around you and start to draw you in. Sire, you're up. Read on board. Um, do you want me to use my bestow tail from last week or do you want me to re-roll that? I'll use it from last week. It's fine. All right. So I will look towards <laughs> Ripple and say... I will speak to the spirits that's around you, and you have the tail of the Avenger, so any creature that hits you with a melee attack takes force damage equal to my bardic inspiration, so... Which is a d6? Yeah. Okay. So I'll get you to roll that. Her... I'll get you to okay. roll the, the bardic inspiration when the time comes. All right. So, um, yes, yeah, so and both then, you can remember yeah, that. And that's I'll just get you to roll. Action. That's your and action? I'm going to uh see where i'm at and that's me really for now that's you you're gonna stay where you are yeah read you're up and ripple on board all right i'm going to start off by using my bonus action to activate my giant's might so, actually that's something go. else i might need to look at too creating a condition for so because what does that yeah, do it for you it um makes me large and yes, gives that me advantage I can do. on strength and checks and saving throws. Which I can keep track of that too. Yes, I can actually... And I get to use on one of my attacks each turn. I can, I can actually make you large. So I'm going to click that. Hey, look at that, Reed. You're the same height as me. <laughs> So technically, yes. Um, in this instance, even though you appear to be way larger on the map than it is, because you are a, a lot smaller than most, you are now probably the same height as most average humanoid creatures. But um, all other effects remain the same. And then I'm going to move down here. And I am, would, would you say I'd be able to grab Ripple and try to pull Ripple out? You can attempt to, uh, if you wish, you are at a disadvantage because of your exhaustion, however. But I have advantage on strength That'd checks. be a straight roll. Okay. 
So that is what I'm going to do. That's just a straight strength. It is straight strength. It's a straight strength. Uh, it'd be strength v strength against the okay. creature, I would imagine. Which the creature has advantage on. So, uh, 22 versus 6. You are unable to budge the creature as you try and sort of get a grip on something, try and pull one of the, the curling fingers away from Ripple's body. And you just, even with your increased size and strength, you're just unable to do so. This creature seems to be far too strong. Then I'm going to action surge to make an attack on it. Go for it. Well, that's cool. Hello, God? No, that's that? a, that's an excellent that's so surge. so loud. <laughs> that was quite loud. <laughs> um, under your volume control, I believe either interface or environment or sound effects, one of those sliders. I'm ascending, finally. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> the action surge, unfortunately, is a miss with a two on the dice. That is, that is my turn. So unfortunately, you're too busy trying to grab, and even though you action surge and you go to strike with your double blade scimitar, the creature is just moving and writhing, pulling rap ripple into itself, and you only just miss. That is your turn. Ripple, it is now your turn. You are unable to move, but you can attack. <laughs> I have just a thing. Where did I put my sheet? Ah, there. Um, I am going to sword burst. What does sword okay. burst do? It, Make sure you read it correctly. Momentary circle of spectral blades that sweep around you. All other creatures within five feet of you. I'm sorry. That will Reed. also hit Reed. I'm sorry, Reed. Um, you, you Shit you happens. Read. Five feet. You must must succeed on a dex saving throw. Hang on, another forklift. Um, or take one d six force damage. So that's, oh, that's is it a rain? That's, that's just on yourself, isn't it? Yep. There we go. So, dick save from you, Reed. It still says cast spell here. Oh, hang on, I've got to put it. Place the template. On so you this? need to place it. You can, yeah, because it's centered on you. But I the, think that'll do. I think well, you're then, good. So you'll take half damage. So that 20. Damage. Is it a cantrip? <laughs> Uh, so you'll take no damage if it's a cantrip. So I'll roll damage? Roll. Yes, roll damage. So the creature takes three damage. Reed takes no damage. As he seems to be dexterous enough to avoid the spectral blades. Is that your turn, Ripple? And then I shall cast. Hex. Uh, Hex is a bonus action, yes. Yep. What are you going to uh, target it and cast it? And then what's I'm the, what back. are you going to give it on this? Uh, what are you going to give it disadvantage on? I'm going to give it disadvantage on its strength checks. What does it come up with? It, keeps, it comes up with mark target. So yes, you have to target the creature. E or alt clip to target. And then That's click cool. X. Right. Done. You're also concentrating. I'm now concentrating, so I'll deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage to the target whenever I hit when it. You... Yes, you should have done that first. It. Yes, you should have done that first. Oh, well, next Never time. Mind. <laughs> You'll learn. You'll learn. It's all good. You will learn. So, back to the top of the initiative order. Ovan. You've seen all that's transpired. Ah. <laughs> You've seen Ripple uh, attack with its with her uh, spectral swords. You've seen Reed enlarge himself and surge forward to try and help Ripple break free. Yes. <laughs> Does it appear that the um, monster is like bringing a close and is yes. like about to? 
Buffy is drawing her, drawing her in. Uh, or he's literally it's reached out and started to pull her pull her into itself. I have a bubble. I don't want you in my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I just I want to try and guys uh, try and attack the arm. You need, to get, you need to get it to drop it. Drop her. Arcos, are you okay over there? Are you hurting? I think we'll be fine back here. Mm. <laughs> Six mm -hmm. seconds. What are you doing? I hate this. I hate this so much. Um, I'm going to, uh, if I can move myself just a little bit, um, I don't really want to get up close to it. That was 10 feet. Uh, down here. And then I'm going to hold my attack again with my mace. Nice. Reach. So, that is your turn. Arcos, you're up. Yorick, you're on board. So, he looks over to Orvan. He's like, everything fucking hurts. <laughs> and then he, he's like, he's looking at Ripple and, and Reed, and he's like, oh, for fuck's sake. And he just runs down this thing into melee with this what's it which i'm gonna do slowly <laughs> it's all good <laughs> all right this fucking hand crossbow is no good <laughs> it's not the user it's the the tools that's what it is definitely the tools right. definitely. he's gonna have his have his short swords out and i will uh attempt to stab it Stab it. stab Thirteen, nineteen hits. Damn. Oh, well, your damage. You will also get sneak attack. Yeah. Dealing your first first lot of damage. Drives it in. You find a nice. I mean, the whole thing's fleshy, but a nice fleshy bit. Dealing a total of nine points of piercing damage or slashing, depending on how you look at it from a dagger. But um, you're able to find a, a, a squishy part, which you can deal some relative damage to it. It's opened up a little bit of a wound there. It's, although it doesn't seem to really be worried by it at all. Like it's just focused solely on Ripple at the moment. Yeah. Is that your turn? Um, and for a moment, he thinks about disengaging, but like Ripple's still there and Reed's useless. Um, <laughs> not his fault. <laughs> so I use my offhand to stab again. Stab away, good sir. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love it. Yep. Unfortunately, your offhand, you're just not quick enough to get another attack in. That's the metal hand. It makes sense. That's my turn. That's your turn. Uh, Eureka, you are up with Sire on board. Uh, I'm going to continue the run around the edge, which will take me um, up against the edge of the stairs here, where I'll continue my movement, giving myself um, a jump and push off the wall with my feet and try and backflip over Ripple um, to where the altar is. Athletics check. Let's, let's see how good this is. Oh, not in acrobatics? Well, <laughs> acrobatics. I know what I mean. Um, I get this with advantage because I got played so well. Yeah. Okay. And that only rolled once. You didn't press the advantage button. I held shift, but it didn't work. <laughs> no, no. You need to do it. When you click it up, it should pop up a box. Yep. Give you advantage, disadvantage. But it's all good. 17. Looks pretty good. 
you managed to to land it. Um, no opportunity attack with Blade Song either, is there? Uh, let me double check that because I because if there is, uh, I mean, if there if it doesn't state it, he'll definitely get it because um, he's got ten foot reach. So that's fine. Yeah, no. Um, I'm pretty sure. That... I'm pretty sure that um, it doesn't give any extra on that. Yeah, no, no, it's not stopping oh. opportunity attacks. So he will get an opportunity attack against you. Going to make a s slam attack. Which will definitely hit you with a 19. And it will do 13 points of damage as you are. I'd say even with that too, you, you don't land well. You are literally swatted out of the sky, out of the air as you backflip up over Ripple. And just as you go to rotate and land, you get slammed to the ground onto the altar. And it hurt a lot. Um, and then, sorry, Ripple. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to cast a cantrip as my action. Nice. Um, I don't know if this is how, how you, you'll mechanicalize this, but I'm going to do a lightning lure on Ripple. A lightning lure on Ripple? But you yeah, might I want mean... the creature to roll that instead of her, because it's a grapple. Well, yeah. I mean, that's true. You're going to try and pull her away from it? Trying to pull her away from it, but if she fails, she'll take the damage. Do I have to do the saving throw as well? No, no, no. Okay. Well, he, he's he's grappling you, so 18, so that would uh, definitely be a save. So he is still hanging on to Ripple. Um, yeah. So she takes no damage unless it's a fail, eh? What's the right. damage on it? 1d8 lightning. Roll a, roll, a, roll a d8 anyway. I'll say she'll take half damage in this situation. You'll take four points of lightning damage, which I can, I can remove yeah. from you. Damage your teammates. <laughs> so that because you are connected to this creature, I'm going to say that there is some damage to be taken here. Um, so uh, well, actually, I, I, you're all in water too, so I could double that damage. Potentially because you're in water. No. Nope, we no. lost Grim again. Yes. Hopefully he'll be back shortly. Discord playing up. Our yeah, turn. he's having some issues. Um. So I we'll leave it at the full damage. Is that your yep. turn? Uh, no, my bonus action. I'm going to cast kinetic drawn on myself, which is the first uh, second level spell. Nope. That's not on you. But I thought I, I forgot to un un target. That's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So I now have 50 foot of movement. Yep. Don't provoke opportunity attacks, and I can move through. That's right. Kinetic, kinetic jaunt removes the opportunity attack, not the other. Awesome. So that is your turn. That's it. It is now its turn. Ripple. Wait, I need actually, you to sorry. make... Yes? Will that give me another 10 foot of movement if I was to back up? Yes. We'll just move to there. No worries. I'll still be facing. I need you to make another strength save. Ripple. <laughs> that is, not loving that me will much. also be a failure. Um, on that failed save, it is now going to attempt to consume you. Not only is it pulling you into itself, it's wrapping its arm now pulled into its body and you're now forced against the rotting flesh of whatever this creature is this the stench is rather pungent and horrible um starting from your next turn unless you can break free or someone can break you free you'll be making constitution saves as you are now no longer able to breathe as it's pressing it like literally hey, forcing you into itself and it's starting to consume you Okay. Um, you will take, uh, I'm just going to roll a d10 here. Um, you will take one point of poison damage, which I will remove from you. 
um but you are now being consumed what you guys see is the creature's arm now almost rejoins with its body as it's pulled ripple into itself and is starting to literally pull ripple into itself you can see she's pressed hard against this fleshy body and is now starting to disappear slowly um that it's its turn sire you're up read on board Oh, all right. Um, Actually, Sayera. retcon. Sorry, Ripple. You have a you have a bardic inspiration. You have a D six. You can add to that save, which you uh -huh. forgot. Yes. So okay. I shouldn't allow you to do this, but you can. In this instance, so roll a D six. We'll add that to your twelve. Still a <laughs> failure. <laughs> Unfortunately. So we don't retcon that. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Interrupt. All good. <laughs> Carry on. Is Grim back yet? No. Oh. Sayera will move forward to Hope the platform. She will look at the creature and say, calm yourself. I understand. Joining a group of cults. I ran with a cultist of mimes. They committed unspeakable acts of violence. And I will cast hideous laughter. You need to make a wisdom <laughs> saving. No, he doesn't. Throw. Please. It's immune. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then I'll like shake my tambourine and be like, da dun dun. No, no, nothing. Nope. Nope. Um, there, and, there, there, there appears oh. to be no, has no effect on this creature. Oh my god, that was gold. All right, I'm that gonna was move. gold. That was really good. That made me laugh. <laughs> uh, so seeing that my uh, tail did not work, I will. And you move would know just once you released start. your your energy from this you would know almost immediately that it's it's had no effects that it, it just has there is no nothing just, no. No, no none whatsoever Terrible. just completely will, humorless uh move forward and pull out my rapier and get ready for my next turn and that is unfortunately that is you <laughs> no worries having some uh mr grimm's having some technological difficulties right Um, hopefully we'll have him back shortly. Um, so that is you, Sayera. Read, you're up. Ripple on board. All right. Well, I'm going to attempt to attack this thing. So. With your double-bladed scimitar? Yes. And if I, I don't, okay, so my giant's might says on once on each of your turns, one of your attacks with a weapon or an unarmed strike can deal extra an extra one d six yep damage on a hit. So that is after if it hits. So it has right? to hit, yes. Okay. So you can add a, you can add extra damage. Like so, if you hit on after a stick, you, I... can, you can add the extra damage okay. on on okay. that. So it's the same as my fire. Rune. Yeah. That will hit. Is that it? So when you so I'm going press, to, when you press damage, if you want to add the extra, you should have a, I, a, an option to add it I in actually, the box. I just popped out my giant's might, so I can click damage from that. Okay, so it's so popped out, and I have it awesome. in the background. Um, Whatever's I'm going easiest. to add that. I'm going to add that, and I'm going to invoke my fire rune. So I'm Does going it to cost the you anything to invoke your uh, fire rune? It's a, it's a special. So it's when you hit a creature with an attack. Here, I'll pop it up. Uh, so I haven't used it for a while, so I remember. This, just, this isn't going to consume it, it's just going to pop it up. Yeah. And then I can consume it from So he's got to make a strength save as well, yeah? Yeah, that's so just when for you the hit a strength. Child with an attack using a weapon, oh, yeah, so you invoke your, your fiery shackles, so yep. do an extra 26 so fire damage. Do my damage for my Awesome, sword. so he's got to make a strength save, which is an advantage, which he succeeds on a 17. He's hexed. He's not restrained. So he's not restrained. The hex is not not for you. It's for him. Oh, no, it is. Sorry. That is a straight roll. Sorry. I remembered. Because of the so hex. Yes, is... I'll make a, another this roll. Damage. Would that be the same for the lightning lure? But it's probably too far. Never mind. Yeah, we'll work. We'll, 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 uh, still mind. would have so taken we... damage anyway. So he's immune to being restrained anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. 
Um, so nine. You're not four, you're not big five, enough so to 18. restrain him, basically. And your gotcha. um because it's a fire shackle, isn't it? So fire shackles target takes you two d six fire damage. So it'll take all the extra damage, but um unfortunately the creature is immune to a lot of shit. Um That's fine. So four 18 damage nine total. eighteen damage total. That's that's good yep. damage. And then my bonus action follow through. Um with that amount of damage, I'm also going to make another strength save, which would be a straight roll. 13, it's enough. Still got ripple, unfortunately. So then my follow through. This is your off, uh, oh, sorry, follow through attacks. This is only just yep. your weapon damage. It'll miss, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and that's my turn. That's your turn. Ripple, you're up. Um, can't do anything at the moment. You are now not only restrained, but you are incapacitated. So the only thing you can do is make a con save um, to see if you can hold your breath. Uh, no, you are, how long, uh, what's your constitution? Sorry. What's your, just your base constitution we've got here, plus three. Um, so normal, uh, as if we're using D and D rules, you can hold your breath for three minutes before you start taking damage because your con's not terrible, but, um, because you failed your first save, I'm going to half that. So you're, uh, you can only hold your breath for a minute and a half. So at the moment you're okay. You're able you're able to maintain. You can't really do anything. Um, however, you do get another strength save to see um, if you can break free at the end of your turn. So I'll get you to make a strength save yourself as well, please. Not not enough, unfortunately. You're still stuck and you're muted, so no one can hear I'm you. I'm gonna re-roll. Didn't you use yours before? Oh no, Arcos used his, didn't he? So, okay, so you're going to re-roll that one. Better. How, would, how, how terribly, horribly would you feel if I told you you, just, you were you missed by one? This is when I could really do all that bad of conspiration, <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> um, Can I give her? Oh, she only gets no, she's one. She, she only got one. She had to re-roll already, so you can't, we can't do that again a second time. Okay, so unfortunately, one. 17 is your target for the strength on this creature. It is, a, it is a big, strong creature. So unfortunately, you're still stuck there, Ripple, and unable to do anything else apart from that. Back to the top of okay. the initiative order. Oh, I didn't click ah. before. Bavan, <laughs> back to you. No, Ripple! <laughs> so, Ripple is slowly disappearing into this creature and becoming part of it. Alright, I'm really hoping that I can try and get it to... I'm, I'm a little bit like, uh-oh! <laughs> can, can I? <laughs> I'm hoping that it's gonna, like, lose some concentration. Like, I'm not sure what's causing it to, like, sucker in. <laughs> but I want to throw this, um, I'm sorry, um, alchemist fire flask at her, at the, uh, creature. Okay. So, um, um, how close do you want to get to throw it is the question. Well, it says Because that'll I determine do... what you need to hit. That'll determine the dice roll you need to hit it, is how close you are to it. It says I can do 20 feet, so I'm, like, out of the range at the moment. But do I need, are you saying I need to go further? Because it, it is 20 feet away that I can throw it. Technically, you're, you're within range, but the DC will be, or the, the chance to hit it will be higher. If, okay. uh, will, the easy, it'll be easier to hit if you're closer to it. Right. Put it that way. I'm, I'm really hoping at that this will At 20 feet, call, it'll be a little bit like... harder to make sure that you don't hit your friends, is what I'm getting at. All right, I'm just, I'll, uh, I'll just move forward a little Okay, I'm so I'll get you. <laughs> I'll get you to roll a d twenty plus your yep. dex. To um, that'll be plus two. See uh, if you can hit the creature. Okay. Oh, I mean, it's pretty guys, big. So it's the, the DC is going to be pretty easy. It's pretty. It's pretty big. 
good. But it's how much, uh, how much, if any, splash damage uh, could potentially happen. No, you're good. Seven. So, um, I think we desired, decided that my Alchemist Fire was a little bit different than um D and D's oh. Alchemist Fire because D and D's Alchemist Fire sucks shit. Um and my Alchemist Fire does 2d6 damage, not 1d4. Damn. I'll get you to roll 2d6 and it continues to burn as well. Yep, and this still puts it out. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't give a shit, but anyway. It probably doesn't, but uh, so I'll get you to roll 2d6. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! A five and a five! That's ten! And ten points of fire damage. Um, so it'll take ten points of fire damage and is now also on fire. And it'll continue to take fire damage for... Uh, roll a d4 for me as well, please, and tell me what you get. Oh, no joke. A four. A <laughs> four? So yeah. for the next, that's not bad. For the next four turns, it will um, continue to take fire damage. Um, and because it took fire damage, uh, it had to make a strength, uh, strength save. And while it has not released Ripple, Ripple's no longer pressed hard up against it. You can see the, the oh, grip it has on it has released enough that she's able to breathe and okay, is not now being fully... <laughs> In, uh, enveloped in this creature, so it's almost like it's relaxed its grip, not completely uh, releasing her. But she's so you you're you, you're not out of breath. You can breathe now for a second. Um, Yay! Ripple. So right. um, uh, that is that will... your turn? Uh, yeah, because I don't want to. That's action. Any yeah, yeah. Reactions. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. I'm smart today. <laughs> Arcos, you're up. And Zurich, you're on board. So Arcos seeing that um, for a bit Briffle's been suffocating and then she's sort of managed to get her head out of it so she can breathe, he's just going to go in with both short swords and try and stab around her to try and try and peel her out. No worries, make your attacks. Or, or is this a strength thing? You tell me, are you going to try and just do damage or are you going to try and prize her free? I'm going to try and cut her free so i'd say it's still attacks okay make your attacks you're gonna have to do significant damage to force a force a save here yeah yeah i would say definitely on a critical hit if you are able to critical critically hit this creature it'll it will force uh it to release ripple yeah and he's actually going to swap one of his short swords for the silver one he doesn't yep. understand that it's probably not going to make a lick of difference, okay. Okay. but he's he's noted. It's gonna no pressure, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> As if you can talk. Oh, she can't. She's on breathing a... ripple. <laughs> she, she, yeah, heads out. She's going. <laughs> she can't so make, now. <laughs> make your attack, good sir. Oh, that's low. Oh, that's disgusting. That's low. First attack hits. <laughs> The weight of the silvered sword is a little heavier than you used to. Oh, let's stop using these different weapons. And then I'll go in with the offhand. That does hit. Dirty 20. Yes. And it'll only be five damage. Yeah. I but that's still sneak damage. A, sneak attack damage. You will get definitely get sneak attack. There is more than enough allies around to to warrant it. Got so many buttons to press. I know that's why I'm, I'm wishing that the the dice roll will hurry up and fix itself. So yep. another four points of damage. It's it start. You can see wounds opening, um, small wounds, all the little wounds that you've you're definitely doing damage, and it's slowly you're slowly chipping away at it, but it's still looking reasonably healthy. Um, is that you, Arcos? Yep, that's me. Jarek, you're up. So you're on board. Uh, would this count as flanking with everybody standing around or not? Hell no. Here. <laughs> Cool. You need to have someone on the opposite Behind, side. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Nice try, um, though. 
Fair enough. I, for it. I, if for I don't it. ask that, I won't get it. <laughs> exactly. I for it. Um, I will stand here and launch magic missile at it. I should make you roll to hit, but I'm not going to. Far away. <laughs> That's one rule that, that I did forget about coming into this game, which I will remember in my, next, in my future games. So roll your damage. It's a five on the first one. Uh, it's doing the animation two. for all three as if it yeah, was. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's fine. It's not terrible damage. Oop, I did all that damage to you. <laughs> well, I'd be dead then. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not, not quite dead. No, no, I did it to him. Shit, you are low. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's... Yeah. Magic missile as it is, is you, as you, what color is your magic missiles? Even though they show purple in, in, in the game here, what what color specifically are Jarek's missiles? Poo brown. Over them to yourself. They are poo brown. Poo to brown. match my feet. Really? Poo brown. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> poo brown magic missiles snake through you and, and around sort of, your, your comrades, striking this creature, dealing it's that, it's that. significant damage. It's that baby poo color, though. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you shooting diarrhea You're at shooting diarrhea mind? at the monster, yeah. What the fuck? It, it gets it accompanying fucking... It's, <laughs> it's, it's like a, mo it's like a monkey it. flinging its poop. <laughs> oh, shit. Exactly, shit. Um, anyway, is that your... Is that your surgery? I don't think there's anywhere else to move for... Not really, no. ...advantage from here. Um, and I... Don't really have another bonus action, so I will say yes. That is it. It is now its turn. Um, biggest target. Reed. It is going to make a slam attack at you with its uh, one of its many appendages that are now starting to uh, appear on its body. Um, first attack. Natural 20. You got luck rolls, guys. Re -roll that. Yeah, Thank you. I... Use your luck roll, Reed. I don't... <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not, silly I'm not, not taking to... that. <laughs> Still hits, but it's not a natural 20. Yeah. You take... Oh, low rolls. Lucky. Six points of uh, bludgeoning damage as a large... Again, multi limb to limb slams down across across your upper body. Um, it's second attack, uh, which will be a sweeping attack. So it's going to not only hit you, Reed. It's going to hit Arcos as well. Natty one. However. Ripple, you can have your luck roll back and I will re-roll that. This is, this is how the luck rolls work, goes both ways. Misses you both, your lucky second attack, sweeping wide, so the arm comes up and sweeps down across towards you, Arcos. You manage to duck out of the way and read you sway backwards as a, as a large set of hand like double two or three hands in this one big hand sort of reaches out to try and basically slap you that is its turn it is not going to move doesn't really need to Sire, you're up read on board may i use my help action and reach in Oh, I see say, I see uh, Ripple's uh, face there, and I try to reach <laughs> in this slimy maw and grab her by her, like, ears and be like, stop laying around, Ripple. <laughs> we got to fight and start pulling, which gives her an advantage on her ability check, um... I think. Help? The help action? Yeah, I, I would say so. So her next, strength save that, her next strength save that she makes will be at advantage. And uh, that's an action, so I'm gonna yep. be pull trying to pull her. I'm trying I would to say, pull her yeah, out. it's gonna cost you pretty much. I'd say your whole turn. Yeah. 
that's with what I'm putting every do. effort into that, no worries. So that's your that's turn. Reed, you're up. There's Ripple on board. All right. All you, right. And you see Sawyera reaching in to try and help Ripple break this grasp as well. <laughs> um, and I will gi I'll give you a caveat here. If you choose to do the same, um, it'll lower the DC on the advantage roll. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll stick my double plate scimitar bigger. in there. Yeah. You're a lot and bigger I'll try as well. to like wrench her out. No worries. So with the aid yeah, of works. your two friends, we'll move forward to Ripple's turn. So Ripple, you are now making a strength save at advantage um, with a lowered DC. Target is 14. Ripple. <laughs> uh, you still have Can a luck I... roll. There's still I luck rolls out there. I gave Ripple. <laughs> Orvan is offering a luck roll. I'm assuming that's what you're going to say. Yeah. I mean, okay. she goes back to. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can do who twos or you can use yours. I'll, I'll you do, choose. I'll do. Oh, okay, so, then I'll take so yours. So, Orvan has offered you a, a, a luck roll, so re roll that save. Better. You are wrenched free with the aid of your friends. Um, <laughs> you are able to move in this instance if you wish. You will obviously suffer an attack of opportunity if you'd wish to do so, but you are now free I'm of this creature. Up. So you're no longer uh, incapacitated and you're no longer grappled. So you're going to risk the um, opportunity attack. I am. Makes, uh, it reaches to try and slam it to you as you move away. Oh, that was so close on Natty 20. Um, <laughs> oh, we me. lost, we lost um, Yanti. Ah. We'll be back. Oh, she's back. Um, so 21 definitely hits. You will deck. Ooh, that's high. 15 points of bludgeoning damage, which again slams you to the ground. You're not prone, but it slams you to the ground down to one knee as you get back up again to the turn. And okay. you've taken a pretty hefty blow, but you're yeah. no longer grappled. Um, that will be your turn. Sweet. Back to the top of the order. Orvan, Ripple is now free. Yeah, <laughs> but this creature still persists. So much celebrating. Uh, it didn't take a reaction then, or it did? It did. Oh, good. Okay. It's, it, um, it slammed the hell out of her as she uh, yeah, yeah, moved yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ripples in the fifteen feet of me. So get out of there. Get out of there. <clears throat> That's sweet. All right, I I want to move. I want to move the fuck away from this thing because I don't want to get hit. I'm a squishy bean. Um, and I'm gonna healing word. Um, ripple. Okay. So roll your roll your spell. One d four plus spell modifier. Where's that? Yeah, so I'm, for you for healing word. I believe the 1d4 plus your spell casting mod, which is plus two, I believe. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, so three, so five. Five. So I'll give you five points of healing from Orvan. Uh, Ripple, you need to make a. You. Oh, uh, you need to make a Constitution saving throw as well because you got hit. Your concentration on your hex. You are good. Oh, sorry. I can cast that at a uh, second level. I will do second level. Sorry. So that adds one more um, d4, right? Yeah. And roll a d20 as well, once you've done it. So another four. Another four. Roll a d20 as well. Just If you get a natural 11? 20, let me know. Nope, no good. If you get uh, on all, just remember, on all healing spells and potions, if you roll a d20 and get a natural 20, it'll do max heal. Oh, sick. Does that work for second wind as well? No, because that's a natural ability, okay. not a healing spell, okay. unfortunately. 
that's just a natural uh -huh. ability to heal uh, to regain health so is that your turn Ovan? that do be me that do be you Akos you're up with Zurich on board uh, so Arcos seeing that Ripple got away but also got like beat she got slammed on, hard she got smashed um, Arcos is going to run past the front of it with oh, his sorry 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 uh, fire oh, damage right. as well fire damage is that on my turn oh yes I got to get that sorry no it's on it was on its turn I still missed ah. it so I'll get you to roll a d6 for me sorry uh, okay. Arcos yeah, no, it's more damage. Good remembering, like, like, yeah, good remembering because here. I forgot. I, just, I thought it was on my my turn. <laughs> uh, it's on its turn, but um, that's a good. We'll, we, can do, we can do it on yours. One. Hey, it's all it's all damage. It's all damage. Anyway. Right, Arcos. Yep. So he's gonna run past. He can't hold the short sword both with both hands, but he's gonna like sort of try and carve the front of it. <laughs> no worries. Attack aware. Um, yeah, no more short sword. Unfortunately, a miss. Yep. So, and then he's going to uh, keep going. He's going to disengage for his Don't bonus need, action. You do not need to. It has used its oh, reaction. It's taken, it has taken its yep. thing. All right, well, I'll stab it again, and then I'll do what I was going to do. Yeah. It uh, used its reaction to uh, attack Ripple. Yeah, that's the whole reason I'm doing this. <laughs> Ugh. Another miss, unfortunately. This place seems to be getting to you. This thing, whatever this is. The, it started to... The mouths on the faces started to morph and and whisper as well so that this room is now starting to swell with the whispering sounds of this creature and i would say if anyone at the moment the person that it's affecting the most is you across if just in again flavor stuff you are unable to attack it in this moment missing with both your attacks yeah so he runs past it and then he goes up to ripple and sort of like tries to like support her up and then he like you know, goes, turns around and sort of covers her back. So no he can't worries. hit it again. Well, in his mind, anyway. No problem. Zurich, your turn. Sire on board. All right. Um, this is just for flavor, so you can choose to not do it or whatever. It doesn't matter. I can just run in at normal. But uh, just for the flavor fun of it, uh, he's going to run in with the kinetic jaunt up, and he's going to run straight through um, Ripple, Arcos, and Reed before... Um, jumping and trying to climb to the top of the monster's head, pull out a dagger and stab down on its head. That's not just for flavor. That's very specific. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you definitely need need uh, athletic, uh, acrobatics for that particular little stunt. Uh, we'll say DC 15. 15. So you managed to make it all the way to your target. We'll put you on it. Make your attack. I did click it. What's going on? There we go. Oh, I did it twice for some reason. Yes, you did. That's okay. Unfortunately, you are unable to find a sweet spot with your target. I will reroll. Luck rolls. Oh, all these luck rolls. I've got to remember that I have them now. Fun times. That hits. Killing four points of damage. Find one of the one of the gaping moors and stab it right in the eyeball, and its audible popping sound is gushes sort of black and greenish goo. You sure it's not gushing brown goo? <laughs> No, that's your rig. He, he gushes um, bamboo. goo. <laughs> and, and from there, I will slide down or He's fall down, slide down, whatever it is, jump down, <laughs> and then, uh, so basically dismount and then yep. run the rest of my distance away the because you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't hit me. 
That's why he has me. <laughs> and that's super smart to challenge the DM. But... <laughs> it is. It is super smart. Right. Is that your turn, Zarek? Yes, that's it. It is now its turn. Um, we have ooh, three of you all in front there. It is a little annoyed that it is not uh, able to um, consume Ripple as Ripple is wrenched from its grasp and has managed to run away. It is going to make... Hey, come here, sir. It's going to make an, a sweeping attack at the three within 10 feet in front of it. So Syra, Arcros, and Reed. Let's see. It misses you all. Seriously? Dodgy motherfuckers. Oh no, it hits Syra. It's 14. Oh no, it does. 14. 13, it misses. Holy shit. Fuck, it's got a second attack, eh? And as it comes back the other way, so its first attack, sort of backhand across your man is to duck underneath it as it slowly comes back and comes back with the same hand in the opposite direction. Son of a bitch. I do have a re-roll, which I could potentially use here. I think he's going to re-roll this. Uh, who is am I going to give back? Um, Ripple got hers back. Uh, Arcos, I'll give you yours back. I'll make one more attack here. Better. Hits all three of you. Um, four. Ooh, 12 points, 16 points of damage on all three of you. Slam, again, it just that, raises that big multi-fingered thing up and slams right across all three of you, striking you down, sending you into the water. You're not, again, not knocked, knocked prone, but for Flavia, you're knocked to the ground. You're able to get back up without too many problems. But you've all I'm taken a prone. massive, massive attack. I mean, you stood your ground. Is you're immune? Are you immune uh, when you're in your large form, aren't you? I'm at zero HP. Are you? Yep, Ooh, you I have are 15 too. HP that took me down. You are unconscious, good sir. I will mark you as Laying such. face down in water. Yes, you are. That doesn't really matter. But uh, Reed is unconscious, which will also mean... Um... that you revert back to your regular size. So unfortunately, Reed is slammed to the ground in the water and is no longer moving. That is, it's turned. Syra, you're up. You've seen, uh, you've taken this massive hurt. You've seen Arcos take it as well. Gets slammed, both slammed to the ground. You both slowly make your way back to your feet, turn to see Reed. Bubbles. Bloop, 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 on the top of the water as he is no longer moving and is sort of just float sort of just floating at the top of the surface face down oh he is face down well he shit. is face down oh it's gonna stay a bit um it would be an action to turn him over wouldn't it it would be yeah definitely um, it'd, it'd basically be the help action to go over and help him turn him over eventually <sighs> I'm going to, I don't want him to die because I need him, we need him more than uh, they need me. So I'm going to roll him over. <laughs> no worries. I'm helping everyone. Um, so you move forward, you turn him over. He, he's breathing very, very shallowly. Like he's, he's on this door. You can see that quite, quite easily. The, the large uh, crushing wound on his armor is quite evident. And. Um, Can I, and I know this I might take a uh, a hit, if I try and pull him a little bit away? You know that you know the creature's got reach. It's up to you what you want to do. You do run the I risk if I you wish stay. to try and, you can, yeah. I'm very low. Uh, um, I, I will 
this day, and that's pretty much it for me. Yeah, you've seen <laughs> the creature really. reach like he's like his sweeping attack was able to reach Arcos where he was, and he also reached um, Ripple at ten feet as well. So you know it's got reach. And I will yell to my cleric friend, "We need help!" And that is me. That is you, Reed. So making this death save, make it privately to me, um, or make it. A physical roll and then just DM me the roll, but um, make your death, make your first death safe, please. Ripple, you're up. Noted, good sir. Right, I am going to turn around. I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to, from where I am, Witch Bolt. Which Bob? So target the creature and the cast Can away. Target it? E or Alt click. I have hit Alt click. Yes, I'm going to Witch Bolt him. Which will use your last spell slot. It will. Make your attack. That hits. And damage. Doing 10 points of damage, roll your hex damage, which is still up as well. So D6 on top of that. So another we, two we, points of damage. We forgot fire damage again, Lori. <laughs> oh, uh, roll D6 for me, all right. Another one. <laughs> hey, it's damage. <laughs> it's, it's all damage. I mean, one's one's enough. I mean, one's the difference between life and death in this game. So, yes, which bolt? That bolt. That's one. Yes. And then I'm going to move myself over here. Yep. I'm going to touch Reed, and I am going to bear the dying. Is it a bonus action? It's an action, isn't it? I know it's an action, so you can't Damn do it. that. I can't do that. <laughs> you Damn can it. next turn. Okay, I'm just gonna go over there and touch Reed and hold him. The no water. worries. <laughs> that is that is your turn, Ripple. Back to the top of the order, Ovan. Hello. With Arcos on board. I just realized that he like wants a bonus action. Yes, Aha. yes, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Fuck. All right. I really you must be running the... low on spell slots too. Oh yes. I only really have two. Oh, That's why damn. I could not do fuck all. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got um, one left as well. Holy shit. Yep. Yep. You got some low. Anyway. Room. People are getting low here, chat. People are getting low. <laughs> I'm going to the healing word uh, read. Uh, healing word for read. Roll your heal. Uh, that is a three plus two, so five. So five points. Um, read. Your eyes flicker open. You've been held above water by Sayra and Ripple. I really want my guys to get out of there as well. So, um, am I getting a feeling that this is like an undead? You got no <laughs> clue. I mean, me. you can guess. It's okay. completely. It is, it's, this would be completely up to you at this point. What you could, I'm based on what you can see, ring. it is. You have to make that decision yourself. I'm gonna turn undead. You gonna turn undead. Mm-hmm. Uh, your because I need divinity. them to get out of there. Yep. Do I just click it? Yep. So as an action, you present your holy symbol. Uh, any undead in C-130 must make a wisdom saving throw. Let's let's see if this thing is undead or not. Does it make a save or does it not? It does. So it's definitely undead. But it rolled a natural one. <laughs> However... We have multiple, we have multiple luck rolls. So, Ovan, you can have your luck roll back, and I will re-roll that uh, wisdom save. Fuck me. 
Doesn't go much better with a two. So, with a turn undead, yes. if the creature fails the saving throw, it is turned for one minute or until it takes any damage. A turned creature must spend its turns trying to move as far away f uh, from you as it can, and, uh, and it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. So, cannot take reactions. Yeah, reactions, yep. So um, I'm going to be and for its turn, my... it can only use a dex action to escape. So this is... Guys! Get out of that, please! As I, like, me <laughs> As what you see is Orvan's presents, grabs your holy symbol and presents it forward, holds it in both hands, and mutters under a breath uh, a holy incantation. A radiant light erupts from her visage and shines brightly in this room for a moment. And in an instant, the creature recoils shrinks back into the hole just, just ever so slightly away from you. Is that your turn, Orvan? Oh, yes, it is. Are you going to, are you going to move? I you still have movement. am not, because it's going to try and move away from me anyway, lol. No worries. So, Arcos, you're up. You've seen this reaction from the creature. You've heard Orvan make her statement. What are you going to do? Well, so Arca sort of like slowly nods over to Orvan and he like just crawls, like he sort of shambles his way up to the, um, to the altar there. Like he's fucked, obviously. Um, and he's just gonna like rest his metal arm on the altar to steady his arm. He's got the hand crossbow out again. He's bleeding like a motherfucker. <laughs> he's just gonna take a shot at it. <laughs> from behind the pedestal. Um, yeah. Take a shot. Uh, hand crossbow. It's find your mark. will also get sneak attack. Yeah. What you will notice as your bow finds its mark on the, in this moment, something has changed within this creature. This, the radiant energy that has been released from Orvan has done something, not just had it recoil away from you for a moment. You see it almost shrink in size to a degree. It seems to be morphing somewhat, changing shape again. But it also looks like it took more damage from that attack than your previous attacks had made. That arrow found its target and it also buried deep. Is that your turn? Um, and Arcos sort of like, you know, looks where he took the shot and he looks down at the altar and like he sort of slumps a bit o over it and he's like looking at it like thinking like, I'm about to fucking cark it. <laughs> like, if I lie on this altar, am I going to... Yeah. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Okay. Derek, it is your turn. So you're on board. Uh, so we would have seen this too, the same thing yep. when he's been hit. Oh, 100%. You're close. You're all close enough. It may be except for you, but everyone else is close enough. I'd say that you would have realized that something's definitely changed. Um, making a quick decision in his mind about what he can do because he can't actually help all three of the others standing in a row. He might have been able to help one, but not three. Um, he's going to pull out the whip and make an attack, and I'll just make sure I'm within 10 feet. Nope, I'm going to be close. Yep, you need to get a little closer. Natural 20. Now, am, am I going to be a complete asshole of a DM and force the reroll here? Because I can. 
but no, I'm not going to take that away from Derek. He's had a shit roll last week. He had fuck all hits <laughs> at nothing. all last last week. He hit zero. So I'm going to I'm going to let you I'm going to let you have this one. So natural twenty. Roll uh, roll your damage and make sure you roll it as a critical critical strike. <laughs> he rolls low on the dice. Still seven damage. However, as I, as I stated previously, the damage again strikes deep, opens a large laceration, even with the whip. Seems to, to he seems to be taking a lot more damage. His form is shrinking in size. Uh, now visibly so. That that damage doesn't seem like it's done critical. Yeah, it has. You only rolled a one, man. You got four plus but it, the two. It? Well, yeah. So what's your modifier? Plus one, yeah? Plus two. Dice is oh, I four. see. I see. The four is adding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, gotcha, the, gotcha, gotcha. You yeah, got yeah. full damage plus your modifier, gotcha. then seven is your plus, is yeah, the yeah. one that you rolled. All good. Um, yeah, so the criticals will always do base dice damage plus what you roll. Yeah, yeah. I mistook the four was the actual full yeah. dice and the way you do the criticals. <laughs> um, and then for the rest of my movement, I've got 40 feet of movement left. And no opportunity attacks. I'm going to run over beside Arcos. No worries. And just put a hand on his shoulder, and that's it. Not a problem. It is now its turn. Shrinks even further. Uh, roll d6 for me, Vaughn, as it takes. Uh, this will be the la on it. One more after this. It takes another lot yeah. of fire damage. As the alchemy fire. Uh, three. Does its thing. What happens now, though, it doesn't advance. Obviously, it can't because of the turn undead. Oh, uh, that is off. However, its I form is shifting. It. Oh, it's taking damage now, too. Yes, so it can. However, it's not going to. It doesn't advance. St stands its ground. Doesn't move forward. Doesn't attack. But now starts to form the shape of a man. Singular man. The man you all know, it's a man you've all seen recently. Same rotund gentleman that beckoned you into his home no less than two days ago. He sort of drops to one, one knee and looks up at you from a very gaunt sunken eyes even though he still looks rather rotund his facial features are really sunken and very gaunt you can tell he's no longer of this world and almost sort of obviously we're seeing his previous form and he coughs coughs up blood <clears throat> i beseech thee please stop I, I, I did not mean to hurt anyone. And drops to his knees. That is his turn. Syra. God damn it, Your Evil. Turn. <laughs> Gotta do that right before my turn. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> I am so gonna... you no longer see this beast of a creature in front of you but you see a, a man on his knees begging for you to stop and he looks like a spirit he's yeah, semi-corporeal kind of. like you can sort of just see through him i am going to hold a spell doesn't it whispers okay. until i see him act um aggressively okay so Are I'm you gonna, gonna hold. Are you gonna say anything? I'm gonna hold like my instrument in my hand and look at everyone else and say, "What? What are we doing?" And that's my. That is you. Turn. I, I, can I back up ten feet? You can. All right, I'll back up ten feet and see if he attacks. So right. he doesn't. He he yeah. does not. He makes no aggressive movement towards you at all. All right, and that's me. 
Reed. You are As sort of semi floating and you've been held up. You've now found your feet on the ground. You're awake. You're conscious. You're severely damaged. Um, yep. So I would say you're no longer prone, definitely no longer unconscious. Um, you're still bleeding relatively badly. You've taken some pretty nasty yep. shots. But you also now see this man before you. It's not a monster, it's not a creature. Um, but looking at him, like, and all of you would better see this, looking at him, he looks extremely sorrowful. Like his, his head is down, like he's not even really looking at you now. He's just arms down to the side, at his knees, looking down, breathing heavily, if he was still breathing. He, he's got that the rise and fall of someone who's like just exhausted. Well, first of all, I'm going to use my second wind. No worries. I'll even pause the battle music for the moment as well. And I'm, I'm standing there ready to, as, as soon as he makes an, a, an abrupt movement, I will run him through. So how much do you heal? I'm about to click it. It's 1d10 it's a, plus 3. Yep. So click it on there and, and I'll be able to add it here. Character. Oh, nice. 12. You're feeling much better as your wounds yeah. close. You're feeling like you could probably take on another creature or two at this moment. Not that you are at the moment as you watch this sort of gentleman. more. And again, it looks more like a gentleman now kneeling before you. Um. So you're going to hold an action in case he becomes aggressive as well. No worries. Yep. Ripple, you're up. You're still holding Witch Bolt on him as well. I'll you remove do. it. So you release Witch Bolt. I release, it. I release the Witch Bolt. So why should we stop? That's what you say to him? That's what I say to him. It's just... He again looks, sort of half point looks up and says, I have not been myself for a long time since this place was cursed many centuries ago. Can forgive you show me. us? Forgive me, forgive me, please. Can you I show us not. the way out? I cannot. You must find your own way. But I can tell you this. Lead me to altar. Heal me there. Please. Okay. Take me to take me there now. And he sort of half stands. Alright, I'll take him to the altar. So you help him? I mean he, help and him. as you go to sort of aid him, he feels solid enough, even though you can sort of partially see through him. He feels solid enough. Um Ripple starts to lead him to the altar. What is everyone else doing in this moment? We'll go around. We'll start with uh, Arcos. You would see this. You're sort of seated half pie on the altar on the verge of collapse yourself. And you see Ripple leading this man towards you. Uh, Arcos would hold what he's doing until he's on the altar. Okay. Uh, Jarek, you allow this to happen as well? Yes, Jerik at this point has put away his weapons. Ovan? Yes. <clears throat> I I want to um, also help and say, uh, uh, Gustav, let us take away this unluckiness from you. And then, um... Ugh. Can I also like? Uh, can I also bring out the the kids' uh, remains too? Yes, you can. I'll say, would you would you like to be with your your child, Thorn? He stops at at when you present 
and unwrap and present the well present the child's bones to him. He catches himself and says, "No, take them from this place. Take them to the windmill. Bury the them windmill. there. This is part of our home. They loved it there. This place I is cursed. You should leave this place immediately. Place me on altar." Like we're trying to leave this place, so we'll not take him and put him on the altar. I'll help him to the altar. So he lays himself down on the altar, and he, the old rusted dagger that was there, he lifts mm -hmm. it and and holds it up to someone to take. Oh, oh God! Grabs it before you can get it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, he grabs at it because Arcos is fucked. So if Arcos you really pretty... didn't want Arcos to have it. Yeah, Arcos is. Open. I think I may come running out. out of like nowhere to try to. I'll take it if Arcos <laughs> is that fucked. I'll just grab it. I mean, Arcos could grab it. Like he's able to take it. But if you really didn't want him to have it, you would able you would have more strength to take it from him. Oh, yeah. If he can take it, he can take it. But if he's okay. that that wrecked, then definitely. Oh, we'll done. take it together. Um, I can. <laughs> and he he looks down at Gustav. And he puts his head like really close and he's like, my companions may forgive you, but I don't. Your children starve to death alone and afraid. And he just fucking bam, bam, <laughs> bam, bam. You know, and say it over like, you see the spirits only want help right before he starts plunging it, you know. <laughs> and you as Arcos, you plunge the dagger into Gustav's chest. Um, The dagger obviously easily goes through as he's not really there in this sort of in that sense the dagger strikes the altar you can hear that clink of concrete stone against blade and clink clink as you multiple slam the, the dagger into his chest immediately immediately as the dagger hits him for the first time the 13 figures reappear standing around the edges and again start chanting one must die one must die one must die and then just for the next minute or so just over and over it fills the room with this cacophonous voice and then they slowly fade and the chant slowly dissipates and disappears as does gustav's body portcullis lifts seemingly under its own effort At the same time, a low rumble starts beneath your feet as earthquake maybe starts to get more violent. The, ho the, the whole foundations of this house are starting to shake quite violently now. You're not thrown from side to side, but it's enough for you to know that it's time to leave. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do, um, we're going to do a couple of aerials here. We're going to just going to say this back on. Just yes. before he fades out completely, uh, Jerika's just going to look at him and say, "Wrong one. This one." Compliments to the chef. As he goes. <laughs> Is that why you so... were shooting shit-colored fucking missiles? <laughs> So we'll go back to the top of initiative order. We're not, um, this is not something you need to move. Um, we will change this back over here for the chat. Um, so what's going to happen here is you guys need to move and you need to move quickly. So in a series of deck saves, um, there'll be a, a DC, it'll be a group combination. So everyone will make a death save. It'll be a co accumulation of all of your saves will determine what the uh, fail or succeed rate is here. So as you start to move, wade your way through the 40 water, you get back out to the upper chamber the, where the niches were, and you can see the dust and bits of stone starting to fall from the ceiling above. You start running, making your way back the way you came, back towards the stairwell, which led you back into the family crypt. Um, so I'll need everybody to make their first deck save, please. Well, we got a low one there already. So we've got a dirty 20 from Steam. Ripple. We've got a 16, we've got a 15, we've got a seven and a nine. 
Um, Did mine come through? I clicked it and it came up on screen. Yeah, nine. But did mine did it. Mine, was, mine was a private role. Yeah, you need to switch it, it back four. to a public. A four? Okay, so yours is yeah. lowest. We've got three low, three high. So that's not bad. Still averages it out. Means that you're a little slow going to begin with. You, you Maybe you can't quite remember the way back through the family crypt. Um, who was the lowest? The, uh, Reed was the lowest. Reed, your wounds were a little more severe than you once thought, and you, you stagger a few times and come to a knee on occasion, needing the aid of your friends to get you back to your feet to continue this journey out of this house as the rumbling grows louder and the shaking becomes more violent. You manage to find your way through the crypt, back to the spiral staircase leading back up the house uh, and to, back to the top of the house. So you're not out yet. You've still got a bit to go. You've got two floors to scale down before you can make it to the to the outside. You make it up the stairway, back through the storage room where you found the nursemaid's body, past the children's bedroom, start down the stairs. I need everyone to make the second dexterity save as you descend the staircase leading back into the house. A couple of good rolls there. 15, a 21. A 15. Another 15, a 16, a little got good rolls here 21 from Zurich Reed with a 15 so all good rolls this time you manage to keep your footing help each other as you dart down the, the stairwell to the second floor past the suits of armor on your way down you hit the first floor and you start making your way across that first room with the fireplace and the painting of the durst the one thing you notice now is those paintings are no longer pristine or even able to be seen properly they are molded and mildewed and and almost completely unable to be seen you can just make out the family portrait on it this, the whole house now looks different um as you near the front door you've got the double doors that led into the alcove to the front door to the double front doors i need everyone to make a final dexterity save as the these double doors are no longer double doors but they're still doors, but they're jagged, almost teeth-like as they start snapping as you dive, as you head towards the front door. Well, we've got 21. a four there from Jurek. Uh, no, from, yes, from Jurek. Three. Holy shit. Ten from Reed. It's a natural one. <laughs> a natty one. Oh, this might not be good for you. Um, does anyone have a luck roll to give? We have a luck roll to give. We roll that one, uh, Jurek. And if technically I've failed, I can use my lucky... Yes, work. you can. You can indeed. But so I think, I think I'll, you're I good. Ten's not bad. <laughs> yeah. Ten's is always really after an average of ten. You dive through this sort of judging the pumping of this door frame. You judge it. You manage to get through it. And as you do, the front doors swing open. And standing on the threshold of the house once again is Gustav Durst. This time, just an apparition of a very lordly gentleman he doesn't look gaunt he doesn't look sick in fact he looks very healthy and noble maybe as he once was centuries ago and he just nods as you all rush out into the street you hit the street we will uh change our scene here Do, 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 do. Uh, where are we? We'll go back to this one. We'll st we will end our battle. Actually, we're not fine where the hell I'm at. We'll activate this one and we'll end our battle. In our battle there you hit the street it is late afternoon early evening perhaps still raining you turn and look back towards the house and still standing there again no lights in the house it's darkened it looks way more old and more menacing than you remember when you first arrived and Gustav Durst bows deeply and then slowly disappears as the house itself just starts to 
implode. It starts to fall in on itself. The top collapses. And it just keeps falling in on itself until 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. No, nothing stands where Durst Manor once stood. Empty lot. A few broken bricks. Maybe where an old chimney once stood. And now standing in the darkened street of Beriscar once again. The mist still surrounds the village like a wall of stone. Can't really see through it. The rain's not heavy. You can still see lightning occasionally, the, the sound of distant thunder. But you're safe, or well, safer for the time being. I will look where he was and say, may the spirits guide you to your karmic journey. And bow at the rubble and start to walk. Stand with the party. <laughs> Not to st stand. <laughs> what are we doing? I'm going to stand. Stand. <laughs> I am um. taking a stun. No. <laughs> oh, I hope that we have taken his unluckiness away. That was uh, very unfortunate. But, oh my god, I need to sleep. I need to rest. I need to find some way to go. I think we Arcos. need to find some way. Out of everyone in this group right now, I think Arcos is the most relieved to be back on the street. Back out in open air. Even though it's raining, even though it's lightly raining, it's cold, but you're no longer trapped in this house with whatever that was. As injured as you are, you're almost happy to be out here. Uh, next time we take off of a sanctuary, we're going to make sure they're alive. First, yeah. I mean, I know we didn't have much choice, but how do you know that they're alive? Well, if you can stab them, they're not usually ghosts. I mean, you probably shouldn't just stab didn't people you if just you don't stab know. Stab a ghost? Ah, shit! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he had it coming. Mm. Um, I, I've I've walked up beside Arcos and I've got one of his arms around my shoulders, helping him prop up. Um, and I just say, well, at least that was a fun adventure. All the falls <laughs> well that ends well. Told you, Akos, I would protect you against the ghosts. Ah, that was good. We have a good story to tell. Hmm? Good. <laughs> and uh, we have a purpose to the windmill, yeah? Oh, yeah. Did we see where it was? You've got no idea. Fuck me. Well, I, I have this, um, and I take out the deed to the windmill that I stole. Yep. Uh, does it have a map on the back or anything? Or <laughs> Indeed it does. It, coupled with the paperwork, the deed to the house and the deed to the windmill is yeah, guys... a map of this land, it seems. So, so if we just go this way... Like and what thinking. I will do is I will... <laughs> <laughs> we will activate <laughs> we will activate this scene for you guys so if you scroll into this map to where it says uh, village of Barovia on this map even though you're not actually I in that particular village I got a notification village. saying that I need a token I'm ah okay that's, visibility. Yeah. that's I right I can fix screen. I can fix that I, like we do. I can fix that because I'm blah 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 blah, blah. I have a black screen <laughs> No, you should be able to see it. There we go. There you go. <laughs> so, if you scroll into where it says Village of Barovia, which is on the left hand, uh, right hand side, and south and north, southeastern knows. on the old Slavich Road, yes. So, as you study this map, you see on uh, roughly, you see the river that you found on your way here, initially, to the south of, of this village. Um, you see northwest of the village you see the castle that 
looms over um, the village as well. You see a road, uh, which is marked with the old Slavich Road. It uh, has a bridge crossing it. You see that there's uh, a place called the Seer Pool. Uh, follows down to the Seer Falls. Uh, you see that the river is named the Iflis River. Um, but there is no windmill marked on this particular map. But uh, if you look on the map that you have in your hand, there is a mark, a small marking that's, that literally says um, Thirst Windmill. Okay, Which is so actually not that far. It's over the bridge uh, towards the sea pool. Over the river and through the woods, yeah. we go to the windmill. So you would determine, perhaps looking at this map, there's no real sort of key for distance. But having an idea, you will re reasonably well traveled. Um, Zurich is a archaeologist. He would understand maps and distances and things like that as well. Um, as would, I would say, more so probably Arcos and Ripple have both navigated the seas and have read maps before uh, and would know distances on maps also. That from where you currently are in, in this village to this marked place on the map, it's probably going to take the, good, the better part of a day, a better part of a day's travel. So maybe a little late to head there tonight, unless you wanted to get there in the wee small hours of the morning and maybe rest there. Um, you are, after all, standing on a village street. As you look around, you see many small houses. None of them look fancy. They're all very basic. Um, very few lit windows, however. Does anything look like it might have the sign for an end? Not where you're currently standing. Like it, you're literally on a darkened street right okay, now. So if we walk down this darkened street a bit further, go back to this one. Like a center of town. We should. We should find an inn. A little shed or something. Whether it takes mm. us all night. Or... So you start walking to what you perceive to be the center of town. You move forward slowly. Passing by house after house, dark window after dark window. Eventually you come to what seems to be more of a town square. And I will bring up another map here for you because I actually have this one. I hope you guys can see this one. Yep. Yep. Right. So, uh, you can see the party token as well. Yeah. Yep. So like where you were was basically on this particular street. Um, and you've moved way down the street and you've found your way basically to what looks like a town square of sorts. It's not a really conventional town. This is not this. This place looks nothing like any of you, any of you are familiar with where you're from in Faerun. Um, there's no sort of order to the streets. It's kind of higgledy piggledy. It's just it's not really set out very well. And even this so-called square doesn't really look like it would be much of a town square. However, you do spy a large building that has smoke coming from a chimney, and it does have light in its windows. Hell yeah. <laughs> Wonder if this one is alive or, or knock it. It could be boring if they're alive. Well, they do have a ch if, the, if the chimney's going, I guess the, they need to be warm. They must need real people. I mean, sign visible or anything? Hopefully, there's or... nothing stopping us from calling uh, out. As you get close enough to, to make it out, there is a sign hanging uh, above the uh the arch or the doors of this particular uh establishment when i Can find my notes uh, i gotta find my notes so you're uh will why are you looking for that um duck a little bit in between something and say one moment and she will like flip her uh outer skirt from the colors that it had to like plain brown 
Yep. And she'll take off her earrings and her jewelry. Ah, yes. And she will uh, put her hair up in a ponytail kind of thing and look as plain as possible and put her instruments away. So as you approach this sign, what you notice first of all is that there is a typical inn sign as you would normally see on most villages, and it has a tangle of uh steel vines like not unlike a a um a cherry vine or a um god what type of wine am i thinking of i can't remember what it is um but series of vines wrapped around what looks to be a shield of sorts and then it has a bottle underneath it looks like almost like a wine bottle um kind of hard to make out but the words that you can make out on this particular sign is the blood of the vine this is the name of this establishment and it looks very much like a tavern from what you can tell from the sign you've seen tavern signs before wherever you've been but um, blood of the vine is what is on this particular sign do you enter? It's a question. Yeah, why not? What's the worst that could first? happen after where we've just been? Who enters first? If nobody else will, that I will. Who's fucked up the most? <laughs> so Ripple, do they you walk up to the door and you push <laughs> yeah. open the doors? The doors give as you, and they don't squeak. They look, they're well oiled. And you open this into a, a reasonable, a dimly lit area. Um. So a single shaft of light thrusts illumination out into the main square, into this dark evening. It's brightness looking like a single pillar of heavy fog as the thin mist that sort of hangs in the, the village with the thick mist on the outside makes it look uh, eering, eeringly odd in this particular night. Above the doorway hangs the sign, um, which looks like it might fall off at any moment. Um, it's not held up well. You will enter... The tavern building itself is about 60 foot square. Um, a little bit close inspection as you walk under the sign, you can see that the sign has been altered and it looks like it had originally read blood of the vine and has been changed to blood on the vine for some reason. The, F has been scratched out and has been marked over with um, and for some strange reason. Okay. Uh, uh, this once, I mean, this looked like it used to be a really fine tavern one, once, in, once upon a time in its day, but it, it's looked like it's just let, it's let, it's been let go. The shutters are an old and shoddy and, and broken. As you push into the interior, you can see it has a few people in here there's a large hearth with a fire blazing at one end of the tavern uh there's a barkeep that you can see looks human uh there's three others sitting in the far corner a darkened corner of the room um hoods up sort of coats pulled around them they're trying almost like they're trying to hide themselves uh but they're keeping much to themselves um you also notice a young woman seated uh, by herself uh, in there as well. Uh, kind of hard to tell uh, what her age is, maybe mid to late 20s, early 30s. But she seems to be seated on her own and just um, having a meal and, a, and a, a goblet of drink. But apart from that, there's no one else really in this, in this establishment at this hour. As by the time you get there to, it's gotten quite dark as well. I assume there's somebody behind the bar. There is. I will go up to the bar and say, do you have any accommodations for this evening? The barkeep is a, again, a, a relatively rotund gentleman. Um, balding, um, rosiest cheeks, a bit of a bulbous nose. And he's just washing out a cup and he puts it down. Um, rather emotionless, sort of looks up at you, just looks up and says, yes, we have accommodation. Would How I many? be able to have two rooms for six people, please? 
and food and drink. Sort of looks possible. over your shoulder at, at your company and uh, certainly uh, one moment and he walks away from the barn. And the, the first thing you notice is just there's no, like he's not happy, like he, he's, most barkeeps that you know are quite jolly. They, they uh, like customers coming to the shed they'd like to have a good conversation. This one just seems kind of going through the motions almost. Uh, and retail at its finest. <laughs> yes. Customers comes back with a small ledger, um, leather bound ledger. Come back and opens it up, turns it around, and hands you a um a pot of ink and a quill. And it says uh, name. Am I writing this? Sign the book, please. Oh, okay. So I sign my name. Uh, one, he says, uh, that will be, uh, 12 gold pieces. Thank you. Okay. And how much for food and drink, please, kind sir? Uh, for all of you, that will be another 12 gold pieces for, uh, meal and beverage. A 24 altogether. Yes. You are strangers oh, yeah. here. Are you not? Oh, sweet. I'll take that. I'll give him. I'll hand him the. I will <clears> give <throat> him. 25. Are you strangers here? Oh yes, yes we are. Yes, I kind of guessed you talk a lot. And what did you? What name did you sign in the book? Repel. <laughs> Repel. <laughs> he sort of turns around, and looks at, looks at it, and goes. Fine, and puts the book under the counter and, says, um, and hands you a couple of keys. And the keys are just literally a key with a wooden tag on it with a number on it. And the numbers uh, 9 and 10 seem to be a room next, rooms next to each other. Uh, out the back and up the stairs, you will find your rooms. You can come back and get your meals whenever we do not deliver to the rooms. I look at everybody and say, shall we just stay down here and grab our meals now before we head up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hungry. <laughs> we'll just have our meals now if that's okay. And I'll slide over a, and he just, another And it doesn't even say anything to you. He just sort of lowers his eyes to almost nod and then doesn't nod and just turns and heads into the kitchen. Hey. He's going to sink into a chair and like, <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> oh shit! Despite... I try and like mend anything that's broken on on my on my like tech, like outfit. <laughs> Despite taking a massive bruise across my back, um, Jarek is like strutting about like he's having fun. It's his first adventure. I would he's say actually he's hurting, he's wavering a little bit, but yeah, he's yeah. pretending he's not. <laughs> that kind of behavior has definitely garnished the attention of the three indiv three cloaked individuals sitting at the back of the room. Um, and they have started to watch all of you, specifically Jarek, uh, a little bit more them. intently. In fact, one of them has been watching you quite intently and turns to you. You see them sort of turn and, and whisper to each other um, as they sort of clock you all. And, and again, they're not, they're not moving towards you to in, in initiate any kind of conversation. That is literally, you can see, you know that they're watching you. Yeah, and I'd probably be doing the exact same to them. I'd be back to the bar, just kind of like, hmm. Gonna move my pack to the in front of me and start like <laughs> mending that too, just to be like, oh, everything was gross in there. Sorry, I just meant to turn my dude off. <laughs> Very good. So, you after about I don't know fifteen minutes or so, fifteen twenty minutes, the gentleman from from behind the bar comes slowly out and. Uh, after three trips, relays your food and, and drinks. Um, doesn't stop to initiate any kind of conversation. Doesn't ask if you wanted anything else. Just literally drops them off. And and when I say drops them, he sort of they 
drop them onto the table, not gently, just so the plates go clunk clunk and a bit of food spills off the side as he sort of drops them on the, the table in front of you. Thank Places a jug down with some with some wooden cups and just turns and heads back to what he was doing Thank before. You. <laughs> oh my god, pay attention to So what is your name? Thank you. And he just ignores you and I was going on. to do too, but I don't think I will now. That was pretty, pretty bad service. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, when, when in wherever we are, you should probably, we should fit in, you know, just until we get rested and, and powerful again. We should kind of just, you know, be boring as well, you know. Yeah. Exactly. We should uh, be exotic just like we are in this exotic place. And I pick up my dish and drop it like he did. <laughs> no, not draw attention. Eat and be like sad because he didn't want to talk to me after I was being polite. I'm not used to this. So what is the conversation around the table while you eat and drink? And you find that the the jug that he's brought out it actually has wine in it and it's not terrible like it's actually really reasonably tasting red wine it um it smells good it tastes quite exceptional it's not again nothing like you would have you'd get in the likes of Baldur's gate or devil winter or something like that but it's definitely not terrible wine for such a kind of horrible well not horrible place but a, a weird small village like this the wine is actually very good surprisingly Food. The food is equally. Food, food is serviceable. Like it's, you've got boiled cabbage, potatoes. Oh. It's it's very basic, but it's Pickle definitely so. It's hot. It tastes okay. Like it, it doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it's definitely after what you've just been through. This meal would be a, a grateful. I look morsel. at our cost. I'm like, they've Out obviously the got the chef track. from the uh, ship. <laughs> How is uh, your Pickled asparagus. Is it good? Or is that... <laughs> Looks like shit. <laughs> oh boy. Smells like shit too. <laughs> Mine is very good. We should we should uh, take some with us. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> did we say it was about a day's away of walking? More or less. It looks on the map, it looks a... like a day. A picnic uh, supplies in the morning after we have a rest. <laughs> Definitely need sleep. <clears throat> so while you're yeah. sitting at your table and having your meal, um, is there any anything specific you want to discuss outside of your current situation? I mean, I see there's only a few people here. That was. I... Eric looks like he. He wants to say something to Arcos and he opens his mouth and he looks at how badly he's, his uh, demeanor is and just how, how much he obviously is feeling the brunt of all the damage he's taken and stuff. And I, I, I no, and I tell myself um, to not say anything. Arcos is staring a hole through Sierra, just <laughs> like. <laughs> and he's like and grumbling to himself he's like I fucking told him not to take that fucking deed fuck is, it, is it noticeable <laughs> Am I, is it real noticeable oh, he's too he's too injured to, to be I, I don't think he's being anything. subtle Yeah, I don't think he's being subtle at all either I don't yeah. really get the feeling that Arcos is a very subtle individual yeah. and he resents being the voice of reason because back in the day he <laughs> he was a real fucking <laughs> shit he didn't do oh, yeah shit. he did whatever he wanted and now he's like the grandpa and he's like <laughs> fucking telling people what to do and they don't fucking listen and then we fucking... look i notice both your ears are pointed at me is you got a something you want to uh ah uh, no uh, the waste of time I... you you want my salad no uh... no Keep keep your salad. And keep your fucking deed for 
Well, it's not my deed, it's our deed. I feel like, you know, we... I feel we like we're damn right it's ours. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we agreed we were... Why would you leave this it. around? I mean... Because they... the place is cursed. We don't know that. Shh. You hush. I feel like it's not cursed. That, that house was cursed. And we fixed it. I don't know that we fixed anything. And it's, it's attached to the... That, 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 yeah. Save this conversation for the rooms, please. Oh. Oh, for your friends. And Arcos turns around and flips them the bird. <laughs> you know, the whole... <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I feel like I'm the voice of reason here when I say we need to fix. I would I, say I, at that. At you that, know that the, Arcos, yeah, Arcos I turns and flips the bird to the individuals behind them. People One of them stands up quite abruptly and starts to, like, looks like to make a beeline towards your table. Where, uh, But it seems they have a similar demeanor at their table. One of the others grabs them and pulls them back down and whispers something quite emphatically to them. You can't, you can't make it out, but forces them back to the seat. Um, kind of hard to tell whether they're male or female, but um, he's definitely, <laughs> one definitely pulled the other back. I, I turn around and look at them as well, and copying Arcos, I also give him the finger with a big smile <laughs> on my face, and I go, hello! Thinking he's just trying to put on a show. Fucking Mr. Bean, are you kidding me? <laughs> All gets up at this point, goes over to the other table and says, please excuse <laughs> my friends. We're new one, to this Yeah, one of the individuals turns to you, sure. and she looks at you, and you, know, you can see that she's a, a, a female human by the looks of it um real like you can see under the hood she's got probably dark like dark hair maybe black or dark brown kind of hard to tell with the hood up um but she's wearing quite thick heavy eye makeup uh dark sort of ruby like real dark red uh lipstick well it's some sort of like definitely some sort of more made up than than most people would be mm -hmm. um she has a heavy scar running from uh, somewhere on, on her forehead down across her right eye, down across her Ooh, cheek. Like our course. <laughs> um, her eye is not milky, however. Like she's not blind in that eye. She's definitely mm -hmm. taken, uh, been attacked by something. Okay. And she looks at you and she says, um, "It is all right, but I suggest you keep your friends in check. It is obvious you're not from here, and you will get yourself in trouble." Smile and say, smile and bow and say, just be out of here soon. We just need to, to rest for the evening. It's a who you respectful mock. greeting where we come from. Keep yeah, that mm? one quiet before he loses his tongue. Jerry, stop it. That's not <clears throat> what you're supposed to do. And you can tell by her demeanor that she, she's not fucking around. Like she's deadly oh. serious. And her, she's got a on. very steely sort of gaze. Like, you can tell she's seen combat. It's quite obvious just the way she holds herself. And you, you can see her right hand is rested on the shoulder of one of her companions, and it is forcibly holding this person in their seat. I just smile, thinking, you have no idea. And <laughs> go and sit down. And if anyone's watching, you would see this person lean back into the second and, and continue to speak to them. And eventually that person would relax enough that they could take their hand away. Um, but they point, continue to watch. Chair, yeah. They continue to like, they continue to shoot glances over at your table. Um, whoever's sort of looking at them, watching them. I, actually, I'll get all of you to make a perception check. Um, because just just to see if you notice uh, something specific about them. Fourteen. So we've got a fifteen, a fourteen, and a eleven, a thirteen. <laughs> Sierra notices not a lot either. Um, Arcos and Zurik would be the only two, which kind of stands to reason because other ones making the most issues here like ma making contact with these two with this group of individuals you notice that um when the one that was turned looked at uh was looking and talking with uh ripple um under the dark cloak is a, a shock of color around 
her neck area, reds and purples. And it just it's a little odd considering the rest of this place is so dark and dreary and drab that just there's just an absolute shock of brilliant colour that they seem to be trying to hide. And I'd say with a perception of 20, you would also possibly correlate that with what uh, Saira did coming into this place. Because Saira wears quite brightly coloured clothing and, and things as well. And she altered herself to look a little bit more dreary. Whether there's something in it, who knows. But actually, I'd probably say you've seen Saira do that before on other travels as well, because um, Saira's a gypsy. Gypsies aren't really looked upon too well in a lot of places. I'd say these people are very prejudiced against newcomers. I mean, look around. Do you no think? one looks like us. You are a different color. You are a bunny <laughs> rabbit and you are, you know, whatever you are. And it's just, <laughs> there's a lot of, um, there's a lot to look at. I can't really change my color. Mm. <laughs> And it's at this moment <laughs> that you are approached by the young woman that was seated not too far away from you. And uh, to give you guys a view of what she looks like, she is fair-skinned, long dark hair. Um, she's wearing, again, she's got a cloak over her clothing. You can see sort of dark red purple style uh, jacket underneath that and she's wearing dark pants, long sort of knee-high boots and she sort of leans in close to you and, and says it's obvious that you're not from around here perhaps a little advice friendly advice of course keep a low profile stay tonight and in the morning come to the edge of town Large house, north end of town. I will fill you in on where you are. It's quite obvious that you are not from here and you are quite lost. Oh, forgive me. My name is Tatiana. Tatiana Kulia. I am sort of mayor in this town. So please, come to my home in the morning. I'll call you later. Thank you. In the meantime, try not to piss off the locals. Yes? Oh, no fun. But Those yes, ones... we'll, we'll, we intend to rest the night. If you're, if and she holds up a hand as unwell. you interrupt her and says, Those ones over there are not to be messed with. Do not underestimate them. You seem we like you're them. capable, but they will bury you as soon as look at you. Believe me. We have no reason to have any problem with anybody here. We're just wanting to rescue You already night. have a problem. As I said, you are strangers. Strangers here are not welcome. Not by many. So, low profile. Keep out of trouble. Come and see me in the morning. Okay. Apologies. But it is nice to meet you. Likewise. Keep your head down. See you in the morrow. And she walks up to the bar and just and she doesn't even doesn't speak to the barkeep. She places her plate on on the bar, and um, turns to you and gives you a nod and puts on a a, a big a, a sort of outer jacket uh, with a with a hood and heads out of the inn. I think it might be time to retire <laughs> for the evening. I like her. Interesting to see what she has to tell us in the morning. Don't get ideas above your station, Reed. She wouldn't be interested in you that way. 
Mm -hmm. Keep it shaved, buddy. <laughs> I mean, maybe she'll call me later. We only just got here. Do not put things in other people yet. Sayura <laughs> gives the biggest eye roll. <laughs> Ice palm for the win. <laughs> so, uh, you finish your meals and the wine. Again, the wine is very good. Leaving, I'd say, all of you with a very warm glow for the evening. Quite potent, a lot more, a lot stronger than the wine that you're used to drinking. Do you retire to your rooms for the evening? Yeah. Okay, Argos. before we finish up, Are this other one. Really? <laughs> Argos looks like shit. Like he's yeah. <laughs> low health, like yeah. super low. Like his metal arm, like he keeps like, like pushing it back, like it feels like it's coming off, like he's just like. <laughs> now he like his he is wounded. He's just a yeah. walking wound. Like he is yeah. so I am damaged. One HP. He is literally, <laughs> he's literally on the verge of collapse, even with food. Yeah. I, I'd I imagine am... I'd see him get up from the table and you know you take a step and your legs just give out from underneath you and you get that sort yeah. of wobble on before he catches himself again. I am. I am. I'm so sorry. I didn't hear you immediately. Uh, I told you I would protect you. I did the best I could. We we are we alive. And then and you did well. The creature seemed to get really upset when you did that thing. So that's yeah. that's good. I will I will do I'm, my best be, to continue uh, to help you out. Don't be so hard on yourself. This one, however, and he looks at Sayer again. <laughs> I will make it up to you. I can tell you some nice ghost stories to put you to sleep. You will love it. Jesus. That sounds so threatening. Like, I will put you to sleep. <laughs> I, just, I just only wish we had more time to study that place. It was full of history. It would have been good to have learned some more. The door frames were amazing. <laughs> they wouldn't work. The doors wouldn't open. That's not amazing. That's the well, art of it. You know, it's subjective. Yeah, the right. doors that try to kill you were amazing. And and food. <laughs> yeah. You gotta see the beauty in everything, even if it's ghouls that are dancing. Let's go. Let's take you upstairs. I, I'm. Are you sure you're a cleric? Dancing ghouls <laughs> reminds me of a story, and I help Arcos up the steps. <laughs> Gently so, tuck him in. So you make it to your rooms. Um, obviously, boys, boys and girls, two rooms. Unless you're going to change it up. I mean, you tell me. Um, but you manage to bed down for the evening. Um. Before we take long rests, I think we'll save that to the start of next session. Um, eventually, sleep does find you all. However, I need, uh, I'm going to need uh, one by one, I'm going to call for a wisdom save. We'll start with Orvan. Need a wisdom okay. save from you, please. Um. Uh, 13. 13. You find it not difficult to go to sleep. However, um, I feel the, really guilty though. Like I would say that I would probably be up a little bit because I feel yeah. so bad about Arcos. You also find it difficult to reach out to your God here this place, whatever it is, wherever you are right now, you, you find it, everything seems so distant. I mean, you're able to call on your abilities, like your, your ability to heal and, and obviously the ability to turn the dead and things like that. You can still call on those abilities, but when you focus on your deity and your, your God, you just, it just feels distant. Something is not right. There's just something you, I've never felt like this before, and that's disconcerting in itself. Um, you also have, you feel a presence 
when you do finally get to get to sleep it's a shallow sleep it's restless you will get i mean you'll still gain the benefits for long rest when we get there but you just you find it kind of there's just something in the back of your mind that's that's feels like it's pressing on your mind it's kind of unnerving where do you think Orvan's thoughts would go to in this moment, apart from Arcos, outside of that, like friends, family? What would, what would she be thinking of being stuck somewhere she's not familiar with? Um, just how, how much I thought I had given to my god to try and stave, stave off anything that would bring uh, like bad luck to myself, my group and now I'm like they're not there anymore have I not given enough do I need to continue to, to find something to help them interesting <clears throat> thank you Move on from you. Read wisdom save from you, sir. That's a that's a that's a low wisdom save. You find it very difficult to sleep here. Something about this place, even this inn, it's just it's not right. It's not comfortable. You're definitely not home. I mean, you've spent a lot of time away from home and it's never bothered you before, but this place is something dark here. Just, it's an odd feeling. Um, you know you have to protect the reed because that's your job. But even that seems secondary to you right now for some reason. Survival is the top of your list. Um, what would Reed be thinking of in this moment? Almost dying. It's like heavy on his mind. Friends, family back home, like think people that he cares about. Any anyone like that? Not not particularly. I mean, doesn't really have anyone. So would you say Reed was afraid of dying? Yeah. Okay. Ripple. Wisdom safe, please. Oh, it's another fail. Um, does anyone have uh, Elvish ancestry? I don't think anyone does, do, do we? You do. Okay, cool. I'm a half elf. That's right, you're a half elf. Yes, right. So that's cool. Had to make note of that. Uh, so Ripple, again, you find it you find it very difficult to get to sleep here too. Um, you're used to being able to navigate. You've been uh, you've been aboard a ship. You've used uh, stars to navigate. You hate the fact you can't see the stars in this place. Mm -hmm. um, you also feel like north's in the wrong direction. Yes. You know, you generally know which way is north. As as a someone who's been aboard a ship for as long as you have, north is an easy thing to find for you, as it is for Arcos. But for some reason, north feels wrong here. Something this place just feels, <laughs> yeah, it just feels, yeah, it just feels like when you looking at the when you guys looking at the map earlier, you notice that the north on the map, it, it's all cool, but just. It just feels Not wrong. Something, yeah, something just doesn't feel right about where north is. Like north seems almost opposite. It almost feels like you're going south when you're going north. It's just a really weird feeling. Um, what would Ripple be thinking about after the ordeal at the house specifically? She would be berating herself for getting into some stupid situations. <laughs> um, and especially like that second time when she was being smothered that was not a nice feeling for someone who's used to being able to breathe air and water she Makes doesn't have sense. that feeling very often yes to not be able to breathe would definitely probably would have scared ripple i believe i would yep. imagine so and also worrying about puck arcos 
Sorry, Mr. Puck. Captain. Captain Puck. Captain Puck. <laughs> Noted. Drake, happiest of the bunch. Wisdom save from you, sir. Slow rolls, slow rolls. You don't find it as difficult to find sleep. Um, you're trying to remain positive here. This is, this is an adventure. This is something that you're not used to. You've only been on a few adventures, but this this place is fascinating. The house was fascinating. The, the age of it, everything seems fascinating. What is Jurek really thinking under that exterior? He has still got a strong sense of um, optimism and um, like almost boyish glee to be in a new place, something exotic, something foreign, something to learn. But after the day, despite his outward projections to everybody else, there is a hint of doubt starting to weave in that he might be somewhere that he's not quite capable of being in and whether or not he can deal with this. I, I, would, I would agree with that. I would imagine that um, I think he's finally coming to realize that wherever you, got, wherever you are now, it is not an overly pleasant place to be. Like, and you've seen that just even just in the small village that you're in, everything's so dark and, and even during the day, it's just dark, it's wet, it's gloomy. But there's no color to anything, no saturation. Yeah, and it's a bit of a feeling of like he he knows the boundaries of things and this is pressing the boundaries in ways that he wasn't thinking was possible. Noted. Saira. Roll wisdom save, please. Another low roll. God. Sleep is never is never really an issue for you. You don't really have. You've never really had an issue with sleep. I mean, you are pretty in tune with things and things around you. Um, spirits don't bother you. You commune with them regularly. Um, so it's like sleep itself is not the issue. What is going on in Sayera's mind this night, being in this place with? this group Sayura is she can't sleep so she's looking through her Taroka deck and she'll flip up a card and flip up a next card and and look at the door to see the light of people going by or in the hallway and think I miss my family and I'm happy that my friends are with me but I'm also unhappy that my friends are with me right now. <laughs> Makes and perfect I want, sense. <laughs> I want them to be all right. And I wish I had my family's advice in this moment. No That's worries. And lastly, Arcos. Wisdom save? Wisdom save, please. Highest roll of the night, 2020. I'd say you're so fucking wounded <laughs> that sleep comes easy. You're just, you're absolutely exhausted. However, you are haunted by dreams. What those dreams are, are up to you. Um, just your surface thoughts. In this moment, so um, just the basics. With those troubled thoughts, um, Arcos, um, he's often reluctant to do it, but he pushes forward thoughts of young blood, and he asks him to tell him about when he grow when he was growing up on the streets, even though he's heard it a thousand times um, when he was still alive. Um, he wants to hear it again. And does so, regales you a tale of 
pickpocketing the rich on the streets of Neverwinter. Occasionally going, occasionally traveling through to Daggerford doing the same thing, just taking things that didn't belong to him, how it made him feel, how he managed to survive with that kind of skill until he grew strong enough to bully a few people into giving him things. Generally a nice dude, but he grew to be big and strong, as you well know, the time you spent with him. In fact, he sort of he sort of sniggers to himself before you finally do catch sleep and remembers a time he popped the dude's head clean off his shoulders just by picking him up and slamming him on the ground. It's the memory that he remembers from an adventure an adventure funnily enough that you were a part of and as he regales it, you, the memory becomes quite clear for you. And I'll use my feature Whispers of the Dead to change my proficiency from deception to athletics in... Ooh. So I can nice. click it. I don't know how it works in Foundry. Um, I, will, I will do that. It says, yeah. yeah. So what you do, uh, if you go to your spanner, the top left, yeah, I click that did, first. Ch I did change it before, so I know I can. I think yep. it still says deception in the features, but... As long as yeah, we know yeah, just, where I'm at. As long as, as long as it's in your skills, that's fine. So as long as you change... Oops, that one. Yep, so you change, them, change whatever it is in there, and it's all good, because yeah, yep. it doesn't matter what it says in the feature. As long as it's cool. on your sheet, and that's done, easily enough. So you all eventually find rest, and sleep comes. Um, dreams are had by all. Um, some more pleasant than others. But this place... You all have a restless sleep, and it's more not the maybe the events of the day, but also just this place in itself. It is just off. There's something not right about where you where you are. At one point during the night, um, I would say all of you would be not woken, but stirred at the sound of marching, almost like a, a rhythmic movement of many people but not enough to wake any of you in this moment which is something that you would probably recall um if you if asked about or maybe in passing or something someone mentioned that you would probably all recall hearing that sound at some time during the night and that's what we will call tonight's session ladies and gents um we will do our long rests uh at the end i oh, no, will do them now we'll do your long rest now Everyone take a long rest, which will replenish everything. Those of you that have Come exhaustion on. will no longer have exhaustion. They're on your sheets. You should see it. I can't remember. Oh, up by your level on the top right, you'll see a little knife and fork for a short rest and a little tent for a long rest. It's just a tent for the long Look, rest. Look, the tent for the long rest. And I will say, no, I won't. We'll hold that. I was going to give you a level, but I think we'll wait. Do you give us that our normally, inspiration point back? You'll get all that. Yeah, everyone will get their inspiration back for the next session as well. Oh, sweet. Um, so you'll get your luck rolls uh, back for the next session. So thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening uh, for officially session six of Land of the Lost, a.k.a. Curse of Strahd. Um, it's been another awesome session no one died although a couple came close one closer than many <laughs> um, which was kind of expected but that's, that's how these things go um, the next session will be in a couple of weeks time I'll post, it, post the details in the discord let me know whether you can make it or not um, and that will also be obviously once we get confirmation that we have all the players i'll announce the next stream for those in chat um but at this stage it's going to be every fortnight um with the occasional map making stream in between uh all maps that uh, i create and that you will see on this uh, on the, a lot of the battle maps you'll see on on the story will be are available for purchase if that's what you wish contact me via my uh email my business email evil do a at gmail.com and for details and pricing and all that sort of thing um but yeah thank you so much everybody players for 
joining us for another another episode of our story. I'm kind of pleased no one died. I would have hated to see Arcos or Reed get smushed. Yeah, uh, honestly, <laughs> anyone, it was that like, matter. I'm not allowed to die this early on in the campaign. <laughs> I did that last no, time. No, no, you're not allowed to die. You gotta, you've got to, you at least <laughs> got to survive to at least level five because that was would be after the last one. Exactly. <laughs> But uh, as I said, we are playing um, milestone leveling. So technically, if we were playing this as written in the module, you would have only just got level three anyway, because the Durst, Durst Manor is generally from one to three. So we'll keep you at level three for a little longer until we hit the next potential milestone. So the next session, obviously, we'll be starting with our group at the Blood of Vine. and. Um, They'll be deciding what or to go visit the mayor, I guess, and decide what they're going to do. What with was her the... surname? Tatiana. Kulyana. Kulyana. Yeah. I couldn't so, remember. Well, you later. I, yeah, I said Kulya, but it's Kulyana. So K O Y L A N A. K O Y L A N A. Yep. Kulyana. Okay. Um. Yeah. So. You will uh, obviously make plans to either see her or head out to the windmill, or whatever you're going to do next session. Um, so, yeah, two weeks' time. Hopefully, we'll see everyone back here again. Uh, take care, everyone, and we'll see you all next time.